All right, guys, uh, back with uh, another review for you gamers out there. Um, this one will be twofold. I'm going to tackle uh, first a review of a piece of equipment here, and uh, really what could probably be a second video afterwards, but I'm going to try and get them both into one here. So, first off, this is the Sabaj D5, and um, I picked this up because it has uh, spectacular measurements per audi audio science review. Um, great piece of gear. Um, I got rid of my monolith um, THX788 DAC amplifier and picked this up. Um, it measures significantly better than the mono price. And um, anyway, uh, about the, the Sabaj D5 specifically, okay. Um, it has great heft to it. It has a great case. It looks real sharp. The screen's pretty nice. The remote's uh, pretty handy. Um, I like having that visual um, point of reference for my volume. Um, the amp here measures really, really well. The XLR measures pretty well. Um, but the DAC itself is completely audibly transparent. I mean, just measures out of this world. And for basically, if you get off Amazon, it's basically 500 bucks um, all in. And uh, it's it's a good unit. It is a nice unit. The, the one gripe I would have would be on the volume dial. There's about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of give each way before it actually clicks over to the next volume. Um, it has a satisfying click, but that give makes it feel like a Chinese import product. Um, really, that's my only complaint with it. You know, when you pair it up with an Atom amp for an amplifier that measures even better and has a little bit more power, you have a, a total unit here for 600 bucks that is 100% audibly transparent. Um, kind of end game right i mean that's really what you're after and um i'm really really pleased with the unit now um i don't think you can go wrong here um comparing it to the mono price i would actually say i like the mono price a little bit better and the reason i'd say that is the um screen is larger which i like i, I like having the larger volume indicators and then while i don't really find the dynamic range compression on it useful someone might um, you also have the Dirac which I didn't love but someone might and then the built-in equalizer I mean you basically have everything this does it just doesn't measure as well but you get a DSP with it um, so I guess for 500 bucks I think this is a great unit I think you can do better um, but it, it's hard to go wrong um, more importantly, what I really wanted to touch on was um, when I sold off the mono price and um, ordered this one, it was supposed to show up on a Saturday, and then it didn't, and then it didn't deliver on Sunday, and it, I ended up getting it on Monday. So it's two days late, which I was pretty frustrated with at the time, but it actually afforded me an opportunity. Um, you see, I had, I started competitive gaming with Team Fortress back in like 96 um, didn't really transition to headphones um, until Call of Duty Modern Warfare and then um, ultimately Bad Battlefield Bad Company 2 I think is where I got real intense with it um, but at the time you know I, I originally had um, motherboard audio is obviously where I started and it was absolute garbage and then you know moving on up you know, I, I tried some different Audigy cards and XFi cards, and um, I could seriously go on and on and on, but I kept upgrading because each piece of equipment had a flaw, right? I mean, either the output impedance was so high that you would basically get like, it almost sounded like coil wine through your headphones, or it would really bloat out the bass, or if you tried the original mix amp, it had um, a real scratchy sound to it. Um, just each piece of equipment had had a flaw, so you kept upgrading and kept looking for the next great DAC, next great amplifier. And, um, you know, I went down a, a rabbit's hole of DACs and sound cards and trying tubes and all these things. And um, I've been on that journey ever since, and, it, and it's basically been a decade. And um, so 
during that time span, I never really even um, bothered to stop and test onboard audio again. But waiting for this unit to arrive, I had to. Um, I, I, I liked my competitive gaming, and it was on a weekend, and uh, you know, I, I didn't want to miss out on on some of my spare time and the ability to do that. So. I hooked up my motherboard audio to my JDS Labs Atomamp, and um, I ran the bulk of my gaming for that weekend like that. I, I did try doing a little bit directly to the amplifier on the um, Realtek 1220 VB IC, and it did power the VRM1 just fine. Um, the reason I didn't test that setup uh, exhaustively is I. I'm a big fan of the Atom Amp. I mean, for a hundred bucks, you get basically end game amplification, and uh, it can power about anything under the sun. And ultimately, the other thing is, is I like having the um, jack on my desktop, so it's convenient to plug into. So whether I had a, a whether I was doing just motherboard audio or not, I would still keep the Atom Amp. But the thing that blew me away was through a whole weekend of taste testing movies, music, and my about a half dozen games, I couldn't tell the difference um, between what I was running before and running this. And then obviously when the Sabaj D5 showed up, I decided to pit them head to head. And um, guys, I, even with music and the Virum 1s and uh, running some some higher res stuff, I could not discern the difference between my Realtek 1220VB and this, the Sabaj D5. And um, that blew me away. I mean, I went to Reddit and I was looking for all kinds of, I started researching and I found that a lot of people were real happy with the 1220. Um, Audio Science Review has tested the 1220 on a different motherboard and it didn't test quote unquote great, but um, going back to like NWAV guy and some of those um, type of readings where you're looking at what should be audibly transparent and um, it measures well enough that it should be for most people in most use, use cases audibly transparent and uh, the only other thing that really left me questioning was well how much degradation is there on gaming load because you know i have a 9900k at 5 gigahertz and a 1080 ti running over 2 gigahertz and i was not able to tell the difference even under full load i just i couldn't when i was um gaming i i saw no loss in audio quality and um i found a few use cases where some people were able to um make it perform worse with depending on what card you have so um Ultimately, I think it's still great to get the DAC outside of the PC case. And um, I'm not telling you to not buy a DAC, but I am telling you that I'm not sure you need one, right? So like, there's a lot of nice things about having a unit like the D5. Like if in a vacuum, you're just looking for something different and to better your setup, you spend you know $500 on the D5 and you don't already have an Animap. You don't need to rush and go get an Animap. It's gonna measure real well. All the jacks will be on your desktop. You'll have XLR out if you want it. You'll have a screen. You'll have multiple inputs. So if you want to hook up your console and your PC to it and have a remote and all this, there's a lot of reasons to buy a DAC. But I would tell you is when you're shopping for a DAC, don't just chase numbers, which I've been doing for a long time, you know, and, and come to find out, I, th I think probably numbers wise, I probably could have stopped, you know, back when I got the Zonar Essence card, you know, and, and I went from the Essence to the Titanium HD to the uh, UD7 MK2 and the Essence 2, and I mean, on and on and on. I Seriously, I, I, I would have to make a list and try and figure out how many I've I've used, I've, I've just gone through a plethora of them and um, make sure when you're shopping for a DAC that you're shopping for it for the features you want. You know, do you want to build an amplifier? Do you get the outputs you want? Do you have the inputs you want? Do you have the screen that you want if you want that? Um, but buy a, a solution that is checking the boxes of features and functionality that you want and do not just chase measurement numbers like SYNAD or SNR or dynamic range, all that really um, 
I would still buy something that has been tested, but as long as it's been tested and it's running, you know, around that 85 to 90 sit at, it's, it's, you're not going to hear the difference. Um, so for whatever that's worth, granted, I'm looking at one motherboard, right? I have a Gigabyte Z390 um, Aurorus Pro Wi-Fi. Uh, they seem to be doing a good job of isolating that portion of the, the motherboard. Um, I think if you have one that has an add-in PCIe card, it's probably more susceptible to interference from the GPU and things like that. And again, there are situations where you might just put a new component in your system that could make your 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 onboard deck um, noisy. But in my case, running running this motherboard to an Atom amp with a Verum One and the SHP ninety five hundred has been great. You know the Denon uh, AHD seventy two hundred all working great. So um, really wanted to make sure I sh shared that with you guys because I think I could probably save some folks some some money that way. So. Hopefully that's helpful to you guys. If you guys have any other DAC or AMP sound card solutions you want me to test or share videos with, I certainly am open to that. Um, like I said, I'm not a, a DAC AMP hater, but I, I do think that it, not everybody needs one. And it's definitely a, a setup that you can grow into and grow into features you want, but not measurements you're chasing. So um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, if you need anything else, just shoot me a, a comment. I will try and get back to you. Thanks.